Today I will explain the meaning of consignment in general, then I will go into the details of the vendor consignment process, and I will run a full demo on the SAP S4HANA. I have been doing these videos for a little more than two years now. And I'm almost at 14,000 subscribers, and I have published more than 100 videos. And I never actually imagined the amount of effort and time I will be able to put in this channel. I really enjoy doing these videos. But still, keeping this channel running requires a lot of time and effort, so I really need your support. If you like the content you see in this channel, then please share, subscribe, comment, like, and also if you would like to support the channel financially, you can find a link to my Patreon page in the description of the YouTube video. Thank you and I hope you enjoy watching this one. To understand the meaning of consignment, let's take a very simple example. We have a company that produces chairs. And we always have a need for wood, since this is one of the main components we use in our production. So we made a deal with our supplier to transport a big amount of wood into our storage location without selling the stock to us. So the owner of this stock is still the supplier, but we have the right to use the stock in our production or for any other reasons whenever we want. And once we consume or use this stock, we are going to post the financial entries for the goods receipt and the goods issue at the same time. And after a period, a week or a month as we agree with the supplier we are going to count the full amount of wood that we used and we are going to post a supplier invoice for the total amount this is called the consignment process the wood inventory is called the consignment inventory and the supplier is called the consigner and the customer or our company is called the consignee now as you see in this situation the consignee is happy since we can guarantee that we will have continuous supply of raw materials. The consignor is happy since he can guarantee that we will always use his raw materials and we are not going to look for other suppliers. And so it is a win-win situation. And there are many advantages and disadvantages to the consignment, which is not the topic of our video today. So if we look into this process, in SAP, it is divided into two completely separate processes. The part of the vendor, the supplier, providing the stock to another company is called the customer consignment. And the part of the consignee or the customer taking stock from the supplier is called the vendor consignment. So today we are going to assume that we are the shares company, the customer or the consignee, and we are going to obtain consignment inventory from our supplier who will be the consigner. So today, I will go into the details of the vendor consignment process. So the first step is to agree with our supplier to transfer the stock to our storage location. And to do this, we are going to create a purchase order. And as you will know, when we create a purchase order, there is no financial entry. Now, the second step is to physically receive the stock into our storage location. And when we do this, we are going to post a goods receipt. This goods receipt will increase the quantity of the stock for consignment related to this supplier and as you remember, this stock is not owned by us. It is owned by the supplier until we consume it. So we cannot post any financial entries at this stage. We cannot post any value to the stock because we cannot have this stock in our balance sheet. So this goods receipt will be a non-valuated goods receipt. I have already explained this in another video before for the non-valuated items and the non-valuated goods receipt. I will leave you a link here or here so you can go and check the video. So when we post a goods receipt, it will increase the quantity without increasing the value. Now, the third step is to post a goods issue when we use this, this raw material. So either we use it for production, we use it for a cost center, we use it for any reason, we are going to post a goods issue. Now, when we post a goods issue, logically, we have to post two financial entries. The first one is the goods receipt of the stock because we are transferring the ownership of the stock from the supplier to us. So this will be a debit to the stock and a credit to a GRIR account or any balance sheet account. Now, the second financial entry is the consumption of the stock for the production or cost center. And this entry will be a debit to a consumption account and a credit to the stock account. 
Now, if you look at the two financial entries, you can see that we have the stock debit and the credit. So they can actually go against each other. So the remaining is two accounts, one account for GRIR and the other account for consumption. And this is what we will get in SAP. So SAP can actually provide the two cases. It can provide that we have a transfer of the product first to our own storage location, to our own stock, and then posting the financial entry of goods receipt, then doing another movement to consume the items, then posting the financial entry of consumption, or doing the two steps at the same time. So this is the goods issue. Now, the last step is posting the invoice, the supplier invoice. And the financial entry in this case will be a credit to the supplier and a debit to the GRIR account. So these are the steps of the process. Purchase order, goods receipt, goods issue, invoice. Now there is one more step that is specific to consignment. Because when we create the purchase order in step number one, we actually don't include any price or any conditions for purchasing in the purchase order. Since we are not actually buying the products, we are only using them, we are only moving them to our storage location until we use them. So here's a question. If there is no price in the purchase order, when we post the supplier invoice, where will SAP get the price that we agreed on with the supplier? This will come from an information record, an info record. The info record is actually step number one. We will do this before we create the purchase order. And then the purchase order will have no prices, but the prices will come from the info record. So the steps now are info record, purchase order, goods receipt, goods issue, invoice. Now let's go into the system and do the process end to end. This way it will be easier to understand. This is where the interesting part starts. So let's go to step number one creating an info record. So the info record is transaction ME11. And you can also find it under logistics, material management, purchasing, master data, info record create. So the vendor info record is created on the level of vendor, material, purchase organization, plant, and also you have to choose an info category since you can have different info records based on the category. So the category we are using today is consignment. Now we start with the general data tab. And for our example, we don't need to add anything in this tab. So let's move to the purchase organization data one. Now you have to fill the mandatory information. So the plan delivery time, let's say one day, standard, uh, standard quantity. This is the standard quantity we usually order from the supplier. This will not impact anything for our demo. So let's say 50. And the purchasing group is very important, 001. This is the same purchase group we would use in the purchase order. And then we have the net price because as I mentioned, the price will not be available in the purchase order. So we have to maintain it in the info record. So the purchase price, the net price, let's say it will be 15 INR per one kilogram. Now you can also go to the conditions tab here if you want to maintain the rest of the conditions. So if you have freight or if you have customs, duties or any other conditions, you can maintain them here. This is exactly similar to the conditions you can find in the purchase order. Then save. Purchasing info record created. Okay. So this is step one. Now to step number two, the purchase order creation. So the purchase order transaction is ME21N. I already explained this many times. So we start with the vendor code, AG01. Then the purchase organization, AG00. The purchase group, 001. The company code is AG01. And then the material is 273. And there is a very important field we have to use here, the, the item category. So until now, if you check this PO, it is exactly similar to any normal PO we created before. So how can we tell SAP that we are creating a consignment uh, PO? We can do this by using the item category. So if we insert, if you check this, we have different item categories. So we are going to use consignment K. 
So now SAP understands that we are going to use the consignment process. Then we insert the plant, AG10, and quantity, let's say 200. And I will also insert the storage location, AG11. So now, as you see, I used the same data that I used when I created the info record. So the uh, purchase organization, purchase group, company code, the plant are all the same. And also the vendor, the material are all the same like the info record. This is how SAP will be able to link this purchase order to the price we have in the info record. Now I'm going to save. And this is our purchase order number. So this is step number two. Now to step number three, posting the goods receipt. To post a goods receipt, the transaction is MIGO. So I will post a goods receipt, purchase order. Here is the PO number, enter. And then, okay, we have everything. Now, if you check this goods receipt, how does SAP know that we are going to receive a consignment stock, not a normal one? If you check the details and go to where, you can see that the movement type is 101K also. So goods receipt for consignment stock. So this is how SAP will know that this stock is a consignment stock, not a regular one. Now check, document OK and post. So this is it for step number three. So we created an info record, a purchase order, and then we posted a goods receipt. Now, if we check the financial entry for the goods receipt, so display, enter, document info, financial documents, no subsequent document found in accounting. Why? Because as I explained, until now, the inventory is not owned by us, it's owned by the supplier. It is just stored in our storage location. So we are going to, to have a quantity without a value, since we cannot post this stock to our balance sheet. So it's only a quantity posting without a value posting, so there is no financial accounting document. Okay, now before we move into the step number four, which is the goods issue, let me show you some uh, reports that can display the consignment stock we have in our company. There are two reports I want to show you. So the first one is MMBE, the second one is MB54. Let me go to the menu and show you where you can find these reports. So slash O, create. Now to display the reports, go to logistics, material management, inventory management, uh, environment, stock, and then we have MMBE, stock overview. So MMBE is a very famous transaction. It will show you for any material and plant, it will show you the total amount of stock we have. So in this transaction, as you see in our plant, AG10, storage location AG11, we have vendor consignment of 200. So this is the quantity we have. But as you see, it does not show the vendor code. So we don't know which vendor is the owner of this and we don't see any values. So to see the values and the vendors, you can use the other transaction that was made specifically for consignment. So the other one is you can find under consignment, consignment from supplier, and the transaction is MB54, stock overview. So this one, you also have to insert material or separate materials and a plant and then display. Now this one will show you that for the vendor AG01, material 273, we have some stock in storage location AG11. We have 200 kilograms and the price of purchase was 15 INR per one. So the total value is 3000 INR. So this is the overview of our consignment stock. If you have multiple vendors, so if we buy the same stock as consignment from multiple vendors, you will have different lines for every vendor here. So the consignment stock is displayed on the level of the storage location and the vendor who owns the stock. So this, are, this is it for the reports. Now I'm going to move to step number four, which is using the consignment stock. So as I mentioned in the process overview, now we have two scenarios. The first one, is to consume directly from the consignment stock to production or to a cost center. And the second one is to first transfer the stock to our own stock. 
So move it to our own stock. And in this case, we will post a financial entry as if we are buying it and then consuming our own stock to production or cost center. So we have two steps in this scenario. So now I'm going to show you the two scenarios. Let me start with the first one. So I'm going to consume directly from the consignment stock and we can see the financial entries. So to consume from, from the consignment stock, the transaction is again MIGO. So go to goods issue, other and material 273, quantity. Let's say I'm going to consume 50 pieces, 50 kilograms, where? So the plant is AG10, the storage location is AG11. And for the movement type, we have to use 201K. So we also have to mention to SAP that we are using consignment stock. Enter. Now we have to insert the account assignment. Since I'm going to post a consumption to a cost center or a goods issue to a cost center. So we have to insert the cost center. And as you see, we have another tab called partner. Now, if we try to post as is now and I put, click on check, we will get an error that we have to enter a vendor for, speci for special stock K. Why? Because as I just mentioned, the consignment stock is maintained on the storage location and vendor. So whenever we do any movements, we have to mention the vendor. So the partner here, we have to mention our vendor, AG01. Enter. Check. Document is OK and post. Material document posted. Now let me check the financial entry. So display. Enter. Document information, financial documents. Now if we go to the accounting document, you will have two GL accounts. So the consumption is debit and the credit is our payable consignment. This is similar to the GRIR account and we maintain it in OBYC under transaction KON. I will not go into the configuration today, but you just have to understand the financial entry. So we have a debit to the consumption account, which is normal since we consumed the item, and we have a credit to our GRIR account, which is the payables consignment. This one we will use again when we post the supplier invoice. So this is the financial entry for uh, the goods issue of consignment stock to a cost center or to a production order. Now let's move to the second scenario, which is first moving the stock into our own stock and then consuming it to production or to a cost center. So let me go back. Now to transfer the items from consignment stock to standard stock, I'm going to use also MIGO, but this time I will use transfer posting. And then the material we are going to transfer is 273. The plant is AG10, the storage location AG11, and the same for the destination. And special stock is consignment K. So I'm moving from the standard, the consignment stock to our standard stock. Now the movement type we are going to use is 411. So if we go to where here, we will mention 411. Transfer a posting from consignment to own stock. And then we also have to mention the vendor. So the vendor is AG01. And we have also to mention the quantity. So let's say we are going to transfer 100 kilograms. Check. Document is OK. And post. So now we transferred 100 kilograms from the consignment stock into our own stock. OK. Now let me display the financial entry. Display. Financial entry. Document info. FI documents. Accounting document. So we moved the stock from the consignment stock into our own. So the entry will be a debit to the stock and a credit to the GRIR account, which is called payables consignment in our case. And as you see, this is the same account that was used when we posted the goods issue in one step from the consignment stock. And it is exactly the same as GRIR account, but for consignment. Now, the second step is to consume our own stock for any reason to a cost center or to production order. And this is exactly similar to all the consumption to cost center I used in all my other videos. 
So let's go back to MIGO. Got the issue. And other again, material will be 273. Where so the movement type this time is 201 without consignment, since I'm going to got the issue from my own stock. The plant is AG10, storage location is AG11, and account assignment cost center one. Check. Oh, we have to insert a quantity. So the quantity, let's say I'm going to consume 40 kilograms. Check. And post. Now, let me go back to the reports. Or before we go, we can also check the financial entry for this goods movement. It is similar to what I showed before in many videos, but let's see it in order to have a full video anyway. So display, document info, FI documents. We have one accounting document. So this accounting document has a credit to the raw material and a debit to the consumption raw material account. So this is for the financial entry for goods issue from our own stock. Now, let me move back to the reports that I just displayed, the MB54, so we can see the impact on the report. So this is our report. And I'm going to display the report for our material and the plant. Display. So now from the consignment stock, we only have 50 kilograms remaining because we consumed 50 and we transferred 100 to own stock. So this report is showing that we only have 50 kilograms remaining on this vendor and the total value is 750 INR. Now, if I want to see the details of the other stock types we have, because we still have some stock in our own stock, I have to go to MMBE. So MMBE is in stock, MMBE stock overview. So display. Now, as you see here, we have unrestrict, unrestricted use 60, and we have vendor consignment 50. So we have 60 in our own stock and we have 50 in vendor consignment. So this is how you can see the details. And you can also go to the detail display. This will show it in the more obvious way. So we have unrestricted use 60 and we have consignment unrestricted 50. So this is the overview of our stock. Now the last step is to post the invoice. So as I mentioned in the explanation, at the end of every period, maybe a week or a month, we are going to count the total amount, uh, the total quantity that we used, and we are going to raise and post a vendor invoice for this amount. So if we go back, the transaction to do this is under material management, inventory management, environment, consignment, consignment from supplier, and this one, MRKO, liability. So the transaction is MRKO. This transaction is used to settle the liability we have to the supplier. So if you click, we have two options. We can either display or settle. So if you display, it will generate a report telling us how much we should uh, generate invoices for to the supplier. And if we click on settle, then SAP is going to post automatically the supplier invoices. I will start with the display and the vendor. I will insert the vendor code AG01. And plant is AG10. Material 273. And display. So as you see, we have two lines that we should invoice. The first line was the uh, consumption of 50 pieces. Of 50 kilograms and the second line was the transfer of 100 kilograms and this is the amount 750 plus 1500 so if you sum so the total is 2250 INR so we should raise an invoice to the supplier for this amount and as you see in the information it is not settled we did not create the invoice yet we did not post it so I will go back and click on settle and execute so now, as you see, the information now is document created and SAP has created one invoice. If you click here. So this is the invoice that SAP created. So we have a credit to the supplier for 2250 INR and we have debit to the payables consignment account, the same account that was used when we did the goods issue and when we did the movement from the, uh, from the consignment stock to our own stock. 
So the same account, as I told you, this is the same as GRIR account, but it's used for consignment. So the entry is credit to the vendor and debit to the GRIR accounts. And this is the end of the vendor consignment process. Now to see the full picture, we can also display the GL line items for this account. So this one is 169900. Let me open a new screen. To display the line items of any GL account, the transaction is FB. L3N 169900 and I'm going to display all the open items execute so the items that start with four these are material documents and the ones that start with five are the invoices so if we do like this so we have two documents that were generated from MIGO from the goods issue or the stock transfer so the first one is for 750, the other one is for 1,500. So this is the 100 units, the 100 kilograms, and this is the 50 kilograms. And then we have a debit from the invoice for the same amount. So the net is zero because this is exactly like the GRIR account. So whatever we posted was cleared when we posted the invoice. I hope this clarifies the process. I wanted to show you the overview of this account because it can be a little bit complicated, but ho I hope now that it's clear to everyone and you, you completely understand. I hope you appreciate this video. If you have any questions, you can send me on YouTube or on LinkedIn. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share, like, comment, interact with the video in any way, support me co to continue making these videos. And I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching.